<laughs> wow, I need to put a cushion on this chair. I think I'm missing it somewhere. I must have taken it off when I was rearranging the plants. Well, praise the Lord. It's been a beautiful day today, although it started off challenging. I was intending with my wife, we both got all dressed up and ready for church and prayed, you know, and it was on our way and said, Lord, you know, we're looking forward to this. We've been praying about this. We want to go and you want us to get there, get us there safely and blah, blah, blah. And we wound up not going there. <laughs> Thy will be done, Lord. You know, and that's what happens sometimes when you're led by the Spirit of God. You see, you may have the direction of a man's heart as his own, but his footsteps are ordered of the Lord. And a lot of times in my life, that's happened where God has taken me in a different direction than what I intended to go. I have a bone to pick, so to speak, with really a denomination that I think has gotten so far out of whack that it just boggles my mind to think of or to conceive of people running around doing what they're doing. And that's kind of like this Pentecostalism, word of faith thing, you know, where they've got people, maybe not word of faith, I don't know if they're into it, but I know it's a Pentecostal evangelical kind of thing where you got prophetesses, you know, women that, you know, have the gift of prophecy, which to me is like no big deal. Everybody has the gift of prophecy, whether they know it or not. And I was taught by Pastor Romaine that if you wanted the gifts, all you had to do is ask for all of them and you'd get all of them. You know, no big deal. It's not like, you know, there's some kind of magical formula where, you know, God decides, you know, that you, you're this and you're that, you know. And although he appoints some in offices, he chooses to use people severally as he wills, not as we will. So a lot of these, like, people running out and getting their gift and calling and doing this and doing that and calling themselves by some name, you know, really, you're all the same. You know, whether you're a prophet or a preacher or a teacher or an elder or a deacon or whatever you may be, we're all the same. We're sinners saved by grace. When we're inspired to be used by God, God will make us into whatever he wants us to be at the time that he's using us. It's not our ability, it's his. When it's our ability, we fail. And so I've been dealing with, for a long time, I keep running into these prophets and prophetesses like the School of Theology or something, you know, or School of Prophets. I mean, believe it or not, I was in Jerusalem and I ran into the people that were running the School of Prophets and they were all whacked out. I mean, they were completely whacked out. They must have had like Jerusalem Syndrome where they thought they were more than they are because, man, they one minute they're saying, you know, well, you know, we're School of Prophets and blah, blah, blah. Oh, and by the way, I, I left my husband, you know, and divorced him so that I could be in this School of Prophets and I've done this and that, you know, and, and you know, I had to sleep with this person and do that with that person in order to get to where I'm at now today. Uh, that's not a prophet. <laughs> that's profiteering. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's what I seem to see in theology sometimes. People profiteering from prophecy and profiting from using theology to make something out of what they're not. You see, the Holy Spirit is tender, gentle, meek. He's not some overwhelming force is going to knock you down and slap you on the ground and make you roll around and bark and talk, bark and talk, bark and talk. You get it. You got it. Good. But he's not going to make you act like a weirdo and a wacko. You may be overcome by emotion in some sensitized way because for me it was like, wow, and I was so overwhelmed. Yeah, I probably might have fallen down, you know, but I just kind of sat back in the chair and was like, whoa and you know was speaking in tongues and doing other things and sharing and caring and daring and you know prophesying and laying on hands and doing things and healing people and all kinds of things were happening but it was no big deal everybody was doing it i mean that was the jesus movement everybody's doing it doing it doing it leaving the lord letting the lord he's doing it doing it and we knew that you know it was god doing it it was no big deal like amen. and i found out later that a lot of the times most people that didn't have different capability from the Holy Spirit or whatever God wanted to use them for. Mainly it was their own hang-ups, you know, that was stopping them. They were more like, you know, they wanted it so bad that they made that the focus of their life rather than just, hey, whatever you got for me, Lord, I want it. Give me the good stuff, you know, and splash me with your spirit, you know, and fill me and let me gush forth. You know, I wanted to be a gusher, you know, kind of like what Greg Laurie, you know, had this little cartoon that says, you know, you're just gushing out with God, you know. That's what I wanted to be, a gusher. You know, drill down into my heart and gush out the Holy Spirit. Well, God did it. <laughs> and it was challenging. But 
nowadays you hear this kind of other thing going on. You know, this kind of Pentecostalism where they're getting people running around. You know, they go to speak at these different services, and you know, they lay on hands, they knock people down, they say they're healing them, they say they're holding, you know, helping them by casting out demons and doing weird stuff and taking in money. You know, getting paid. You know, gratuities. Oh, sure, they're not asking for money, but they're getting money one way or another, you know, oh, it's a token, you know, it's just appreciation for what, you know, God has done, right, but recently, it's gotten worse, not just people that are running around doing that, because that's like, you know, well, Lord, fine, you know, whatever they're doing, you know, you just, God, take care of them, and you bless them, or curse them, or, you know, keep them, you know, wherever they're going, you know, but just don't mess with me, Lord, because, you know, I've already dealt with this before. Where people come in, you know, and they kind of tear up a church, you know, and then leave. <laughs> yeah, right. And you can see the aftermath of the effects that they had on it, you know. But sometimes people in the flesh do that, too. Sometimes you can't tell, like, a false prophet from a fleshy prophet or person in the flesh. So it's kind of dangerous territory when you start talking about people because God loves the world. God so loved the world that he gives only begotten Son, whoever believes in should not perish, but whoever else you know. No, God loves people. But people do stupid things. So when somebody's acting stupid, hey, you know, there's not too much you can do for them. If they're banging their head against the wall, you can tell them, oh, that's a wall. You, you need to stop banging your head because it's going to hurt, you know. If they keep banging their head, hey, you did your part. Let them go, you know. You don't go jump in between, stop in the name of God, the wall, you know. You don't throw the wall down. You say, well, fine. If you want to go do that, if that's what the Lord told you to do, knock yourself out because you will. <laughs> But there are other people that are running around criticizing or attacking in these latter days the body of Christ. They're attacking believers. They're telling them what's wrong with them or they're not willing to receive correction. And that's kind of what I'm talking about today, you know, in my doctrine of correction here. Every time that someone comes to you and shares, you know, a word from the Lord, say thank you. You know, just thank you, you know, and just let it go, you know, don't react to it, don't get blown out by it, don't treat it as a word from the Lord, just accept it and say, okay, you know, thank you. Later, when you're away from that person, unless you're, you know, mature and then you want to pray with them, because usually if you grab somebody's hands and pray with them, you know, about it, guess what, <laughs> they usually want to split, because they want to dump it on you and run, you know, they're usually a dump and run and gun, you know, kind of person. Have you ever heard that, dump, run, and gun? Yeah, it's those kind of people that run around with their spiritual gun, you know, shooting everybody with their idea of what they think, thus saith the Lord. You know, I don't know about you, but I studied the Bible. I know that in the Old Testament, it warned every single cotton-picking person in Israel to not say, thus saith the Lord. And yet you've got these weirdo wackos and kind of excitables, you know, running around going, thus saith the Lord. Um, didn't you read your Bible? The first thing it says there in the Old Testament was, those who say, thus saith the Lord, I didn't say it. Oh, wow. That prophet must have really made a big impression on the land. Yeah, and they stoned him and killed him, <laughs> eventually. But the point is, God got his word out and said, no, my prophets don't say, thus saith the Lord. So, I don't know how many of you prophets, school of prophets, people out there in Pentecostal land, you know, are going to get this message, but hey... Can I suggest you quit saying, thus saith the Lord? Because you aren't <laughs> listening to what the Word of God said. You're kind of conflicting. And if you're conflicting with the Word of God, it ain't God that's conflicted. You are. Sorry, you're going to be made crooked that should have been made straight. God can do that with you. Because you're supposed to be His servant, not He's your servant. And that's kind of what I see the problem with some of these prophetesses, prophets, with the Pentecostalisms uh, that people are doing in the name of authority I have, that I've been given this authority. Amen, amen. You betcha, I got it. Uh -huh. That's right, and I'm going to use it because I'm not going to abuse it, am I? Not right, because I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I can do. Not what God's doing, but what I can do because I've been given authority. Bull! You know, the only authority you got is to lay down your crown at the foot of the cross. You need to cast all your life down at the foot of the cross. You need to hang yourself on the cross and not crawl off it every chance you get. That's what your authority is, is to take over yourself and crucify that flesh you're living in. That's your authority. That's the only real authority you've been given. 
Quite frankly, God's doing the other authority. He's the one in charge. No offense. You can argue. You could try to play theological games if you want to. Come back and see me in about 20 years. Let me know how that works out for you. By that time, the millennium will be started. <laughs> By that time, we'll know who's there and who's not. Authorities. Right. So, recently, I was kind of dealing with this whole prophetess thing that bugged me. Because this person, you know, was just, you know, would throw out these kind of like... I knew something was wrong, but I never... I watched and waited, you know, because usually that's what happens is you watch and wait and let somebody speak long enough and they'll hang themselves. They'll, you know, usually say something that's really off. And most people that know me know that, oh, sure, you know, if you say something false, I'll comment false. But, you know, it doesn't... no big deal. It's like, you know, you're not false. What you said was maybe you didn't think about it, maybe you didn't pray about it, maybe you didn't talk to God about it, maybe you just fleshed out that day, maybe you weren't smart enough to know that it was false, but it doesn't matter. The post or the information you're relating is false. And people that have gotten into it and tried to, you know, make it out to be something more than what I'm saying, usually find out, yeah, I researched it, that's why I know it's false. Hello? You know, it's like somebody telling me, um, your name's not Michael James Stone, it's something else. I'll be going, Balls. <laughs> Not that I know me, but God said I know he knows me, so you know I trust him. But that's the point of where you gotta come to some kind of conclusion. You gotta put your trust in something other than your own understanding. And that's where these prophets go wacko. They get some word and they run off at the mouth with it for twenty or thirty sentences, and probably the Lord gave them two words. I know because I've watched it happen. I've seen it happen. I see somebody get caught up in their own emotion and then start building a case for their statement and then they go off the cliff of their own salutations, their own dispensations, their own consternations, their own frustrations, and they vent it on everybody. You know, that's not Jesus. That's not the Holy Spirit. These latter days, you got to recognize that there's a violent spirit out. Really. Something that wants to make you more so into emotion than ever before. They want you to be angry about things. Wants you to be provoked. Wants you to be rising up in arms. You know, kiss the muscles that made you whole, you know. Excuse me? This is flesh. Dead badger skin. I'm inside. This is all kind of like, you know, exterior dead body. You know, I'm just dragging around until I can get my spiritual body. But the point is, that spirit that's gone out into the world of the false anointing, false messiah, antichrist, is affecting everything from the church on the top to the church on the bottom, all the way through, permeating, causing people to go, depending upon your spiritual foundation. You see, where I grew up in the Word, we were taught the Word. We were taught to go all the way through it before you could complain about it or use it or do it or whatever. But you needed to go through it once, you know, in order to get it or understand it somewhat. Because if you didn't have a picture of it from cover to cover, then you might take a piece out of here and a piece out of there and come up with, you know, like Sabbath keepers or something, you know. Oh my God, we got to celebrate Saturday, you know, because after all, it's Saturday is on Friday in Jerusalem. But wait a minute now, let's see. We can't do it in America on that day, so we got to do it on another day. So do we do it according to Jerusalem time or do we do it in American time? Do you want to do it tomorrow or today? See, you know, people just don't think through some of the stupid things that they do. They just do what they're told. And that's the problem with these prophetesses and prophets and people running around making themselves out to be more than what they are. They're fine because they can get away with it. Because people aren't proving all things, holding fast that which is good. I do. I challenge people right where they're at and say, you tell me where I'm wrong. I am open completely to anyone chastising me, correcting me, exhorting me, giving me any word from the Lord you know, that I can receive it and say, thank you. And I'll walk away from you. Because, you see, I'm going to walk away around the corner and I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to talk to God about it. I do have conversations with God. And I'm going to go, Lord, is that for me? 
is that real? Is that, you know, kind of, like, God, did I miss something here? Am I, like, really that whacked out and that stupid that, you know, I had to be confronted by some other person that I wasn't paying attention to examining myself? I wasn't looking at the scriptures and knowing my own failabilities and fallibilities and knowing that I need the Holy Spirit in order to convict me of sin so that I could be brought back to personal relationship with you so that I would hear you clearly and know your voice and that I wouldn't follow after the ways of the world and the ways of man, that I would be able to walk in accordance to the will of God that has been pers already presented, presented to me in the form of Jesus by the word of God that he's already been made alive and that I can see his words and do those things that he said were pleasing in your sight, oh God. You get that? No? Oh, sorry. Repeat it, but play it back. Just rewind and go through it slow. No, really. I mean, hello? If we don't have a personal one-on-one, -on -one, you're going to follow, you know, the run and gun and fun kind of people, you know, that want to shoot you with their their latest, greatest, you know, weapon, whether it be spiritual or physical. You know, the people with guns that think they're going to do something special because they own a gun. They're going to protect themselves? Really? God can't do that? I'm sorry. If he can't, you're screwed. <laughs> Hello? But the point is this. People are, in their enthusiasm, not necessarily false prophets. They're just false toddlers. Meaning, they're just like little toddlers that haven't really been taught the complete Word of God. So they got for themselves this collar, or they put on themselves this talis, you know, or they slapped on a kippah, or they decided that, you know, it's not good enough that there's males doing it. I want the females doing it too, you know. So we've got prophets and prophetesses all running around claiming, naming, shaming, really, the body of Christ. Unfortunately, I ran into that today, again. And it bugged me. It's like this person decided that not only did they reject what I was sharing, which was okay, I didn't mind that. I was like, fine. I said, okay, whatever the Lord tells you to do, that you should do. God bless you. Go. You know, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, James 1, 5. Be at peace. You know, do what the Lord tells you to do. Oh, okay. Well, God bless you too. You know, and I'm happy. Blah, blah, blah. And they leave. You know, then they come back. And they don't come back as a friend, but they start sending me an email. And they start telling me how they need to confront me on something. Oh, by the way, and I now I you know, I know you're not gonna receive this, but let me tell you. Well, if I you know I'm not gonna receive it, don't bother sending it because I'm not gonna receive it. <laughs> you know, there's the only part of prophet that might be a prophet. I'm sorry, self fulfilling prophecy. No, I'm not gonna receive it. I'm gonna pray about it. But you know, I I got this big old long dissertation, you know, and Sure enough, you know, I look for the one thing that I tell every prophet, every person, any person at all, if you're going to do what God says to do, have a scripture for it. You know, I mean, at least use, if you're going to con somebody, at least be a con artist. Even a con artist knows that if you're going to tell somebody the word of God, you better have the word of God in it. So this prophetess gave me all this long dissertation with not even one scripture in it or even a reference to a scripture or even close to a scripture. But boy, could she tell me all about whatever it was she was trying to talk about. So I just wrote back, I said, first of all, I said, I will pray about it, but second of all, first of all, I don't see any scripture. So if it's a word from God, I know God and he always gives me a word from the word of God in order for it to be validated that it's from the Lord in order for it to be the word of God because it's got to come from the word of God. You get it? If you're going to tell someone a word from the Lord, make it a word from the Lord in the word of God, you know, the Bible. At least, if you're a con artist, con them with some good con. Do you understand what that means? <laughs> Oy, yay. <laughs> they need some Jewishness. <laughs> Boy, you should be a rabbi. <laughs> you should try walking around that one seven times, you know. <laughs> hmm. But the point is, I couldn't believe this person went out of their way to waste time, to make the time, to come at me and then to keep repeating over and over again, constantly repeating the same thing in a different way and trying to really deceive. And I guess that's what happens to people is that they think that if they just keep saying it over again in some different way, shape or form, that they're going to convince someone that they're right. When really, God will convict you of touching His anointed. You see, there's a problem with people going after each other. 
if someone is confronting you, convicting you personally, not the word you said, like I put false, false just means against what the post is or the information being presented. You personally, if you're saved, hey, I'm all for you, man. God bless you. Be at peace. Go do what God says to do. Read your word, pray, go, fellowship, have fun, and enjoy God. Bottom line. But after that, you know, it's like, don't throw at me, you know, something out there that's false. I'll say it's false. You know, it's not personal. It's what your information is doing to other people, deceiving them or misleading them. And so I'll say false. And then I'll tell you why if you ask. So, other people will confront the person, not the post. They'll try to attack you as a person. They'll try to convince you as a person that you're wrong about something when God has given you a word on it. Or God is leading you like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Or God has told you ahead of time, this is a day of spiritual deception. Be careful. Someone's coming your way that's going to deceive you. Man, I couldn't be more blown out when the person came right up and decided to send me an email. I went, do they know what my devotion was today? Someone will deceive you today, you know, try to mislead you. And you know, I'm like, really, Lord? Okay. Bingo. Ten seconds later, I get an email. A prophetess giving me a word from God. I don't know about you, but I want to share with you the fact of prophecy. The fact of prophecy is to reveal Jesus. That's the spirit of prophecy. That's what's behind it all. Revealing Jesus. It's not about convicting the church. It's not about convicting someone of sin. You could get into word of knowledge, word of wisdom, all these other things. It's not about that. The spirit of prophecy is about Jesus, first, foremost, and always. Because as prophecy, it comes from the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God points to Jesus. Jesus points to the Father. It's that simple a progression. The spirit of prophecy will always point to the Word of God. That means this written Word that I have my hands on right here and the physical Word of God that is Jesus himself as the personification of God Almighty in form of physicality which is Jesus himself the Son of God. And the Holy Spirit will give you the ability to understand and discern it between the good and the bad or the right or the wrong or apply it to you as you let him do it not as you seek to do it you see every step of the way you got to go back and say me not my own understanding oh yeah proverbs 3 5 and 6 okay james 1 5 if any man lack wisdom let him ask of god a brave not so let me see here i need to ask god about this part then i need to ask god about the next part so that sounds like a crutch yeah because you're blind, you're deaf, you're dumb, and you're not real brilliant when it comes to spiritual matters. Just like me. <laughs> Welcome to the real spiritual world. That's the way it works. So if you're just like a little kid and you just go, well, Lord, you know, whatever you want, you, know, you tell me and I'll do, you listen, I'll, I'll ask, and just keep asking every time something comes up, you'll never be deceived. But it'll hurt because, you see, I felt sorry for this woman. Because someone had to have convinced her that she was a prophetess. Someone had to have gone out of her way to tell her all these huge blow hot air her way in order to get her so puffed up that she wouldn't examine the facts of the Word of God. That she would go after other people's lives without caring about the primacy or the most important part of every prophecy there is. Jesus, from cover to cover, the Word of God, as He's written it. Without God in your prophecy, you are a false prophet. I'm sorry. Without the Word of God in your Word from the Lord, you're misleading and misrepresenting God. Without it coming from God and Him speaking His own Word, man cannot live by what you're saying. Man will die by the words you're speaking. So you need to repent. You who call yourselves prophets or false teachers or whatever you may think you are. Because if you're out there venting your humanistic ideals or ideologies, you know, within reason. I mean, you know, sometimes it's cute to make up a little colloquialism that might fit, you know, but, you know, if you're making a whole long dissertation at someone, and it's not the Word of God. You're wasting your breath and you're deceiving yourself by claiming it comes from God. There's only one thing that comes from the Word. 
are there's only one thing that comes from the Lord, and that's the Word of God. Period. No ifs, ands, or buts. You may think you have a gift, and a gifting, or a calling, or an office, but you know, I'm the one who confronts prophets. I, you know, it's just it's sad. I, it just happens, you know. It's happened all along. You know, and the, God's shown me how to watch for them and, you know, I pray for them because they all fall on their face sooner or later. You know, then you got to go back and pick them up because you love them, you know, because they're, they, you know, they're like little kids dressing up on Halloween, you know. They go out to get candy, you know, and then somebody actually, you know, steals their bag of candy and then suddenly they're like crying because they aren't what they thought they were, you know. Well, that's what happens with nowadays a lot of people who think they are something when they're nothing at all. The scripture warns if it's any man thinks he is something or he thinks he knows something, he knows nothing at all. If any man is lifted up, God will put them down. As a matter of fact, in these latter days, he'll probably let them stay lifted up and they can go hot air out into wherever they go in the stratosphere. Because God will not be, you know, supplanted or removed from his position of authority, which is to be Lord of all. Jesus is Lord of Lords and King of Kings to the glory of God, His Father. And even He submits Himself to the will of His Father. If you're out there and you're running around saying in your authority and your gift of prophecy or prophet or prophetess that you're doing it and you can use the word I, you're off. I'm sorry. You're wrong. You have mistaken what God has given you. And you need to change or rearrange your perspective so that you can hear more clearly what God is saying to you. Because God will not give up his position of authority for any man. Because if man is in charge, God is not. When God is in charge, God can use a man to the glory of his own will to accomplish the purposes he's designed that man to be. It isn't man running off on his own, even as Joshua did and failed at Ai. No. It's meant to be, you follow the battle plan at Jericho like I tell you to do, and you'll see how God can come through. And that's why it's got to be the Word of God that you are constantly examining yourself according to this which is written, according to what you're hearing from the Lord Jesus Himself, because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me, and they went off all the way to another, and according to your heart, which the Spirit of God will put peace in your heart about hearing a word from the Lord. He will give you peace. That's an emotion, and it's deceptive, you know, the one emotion versus the peace that God gives. But really, there is a difference between the fruit of the Spirit peace and the peace that passes all understanding or the peace that you think you got when you kind of say, well, you know, I had peace about it. Well, make sure you know what you're saying because you'll be challenged on that someday. Did God tell you? And that's why you have to examine all three and see if you be found in the faith because there are people out there, like the person I ran into today, who is more than happy, more than thrilled to put another notch in their lipstick case, so to speak, you know, that's some song somewhere, but put another notch in their spiritual gun because they think they've gone out and won some battle they think that they're in, when really Satan's standing back and just watching someone being used for opposite of the ministry. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that also shall he reap. What are you pointing to and what are you pointing at? Make sure you always know. That's why I always warn people in this ministry of video, we're not here to change you. We're here to remind you that you need to seek the Lord. Not follow what I say, but seek what God would tell you to do. Whatsoever the Lord tells you to do, that you should do. It's found in the Word of God. You've got to follow him because if you don't, you'll follow men and you will be deceived in these latter days. You will fall not just flat on your face, but you might fall into hell itself. Give space for grace, yes, and let people be who they are. But at the same time, don't follow pernicious ways. Don't follow things that cause you to stumble or fumble or be removed from seeking God directly. Mind those who are trying to tell you something contrary to the Word of God. And if they continue to do it, quit listening to them. Give them a warning once or twice, but after that, pull away. Pull back. Go back to the Word of God direct. You've got a computer, you've got videos, you've got whatever you need in order to seek the Lord on your own. So be one-on-one -on -one with God 
and make sure that who you're listening to in your church, your fellowship, your circle of friends is sharing the Word of God with you and not the Word of man.